Ladies and gents, Sandy TV here with some more Pokemon Crystal. Last episode we caught Suicune, and this episode we're just gonna be heading east to Mahogany Town, east from Mahogany Town. So yeah, that's a thing. And yeah, we're doing that because we're heading over to the next gym. We're gonna be getting our eighth badge in a little bit, but not in this episode or in the next episode. It's gonna be a while, but we are heading towards where the eighth badge is. And let's just keep on going. And also, there is something kind of new at Mahogany Town. So, yeah. Oh, hello, wild Pokemon. Do 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 do. Okay, another Goldeen. Not even a seeking. Actually, at the time of recording this, Pokemon Omega. Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were announced. So yeah, I mean recording the commentary because the footage for this was recorded a couple days ago actually. But uh, yeah, that's a thing. And yeah, remember where the uh, rocket hideout was? Well, there's an actual shop there. There's not really that many interesting things here. I mean, rage candy bars are things, but I'm not going to be getting any. I'm I'm just gonna pick up a few super potions and whatnot, but yeah. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are things now. Coming out this November, November 2014 worldwide, so we have another worldwide launch. That's pretty cool. And you know what? I'm just gonna be uh showing off the fact that I have the three legendary beasts here. But my opinions on these new games, I don't I don't think they're going to be remakes, but more like sequels, kind of like Black 2 and White 2, but that's just me. Anyways, onwards to Route 44. There's quite a few new Pokemon, actually. First off, there's Remoraid, which you can be, it can be found through Goodrod or in a random swarm. Remoraid evolves into Octillery. Octillery... I mean, it gets Octazooka, which can lower accuracy, but other than that, it's not really special. Actually, fun fact, Octillery doesn't scare me, but I'm scared of Octopi in general. I don't know, it's weird. I'm weird, but yeah. It's Remoraid. If you want to go for it, like, if you want to catch one, go for it. It can learn some pretty interesting things. Things, especially in later generations where I can learn things like Bullet Seed. Mm, actually, Bullet Seed's not really that good on an Octillery. But yeah. Also, Remoraid is needed to evolve Mantike in 4th generation on, which is interesting. But uh, yeah. Other new Pokemon. There's a patch of grass that we need to sur- Oh, hello. Phone call. Okay. I got a doll now, but yeah, there's a patch of grass that you need to surf to and in there you can find three new Pokemon There is Lickitung which can be found in the morning and day Lickitung. It's an average normal type I mean it could hurt ghosts with lick actually second generation is the first generation in which Lickitung could learn lick couldn't even learn it in generation one Which is weird, but yeah Lickitung. It's an average normal type I mean, it gets better in 4th generation when it can evolve into Licky Licky, which you could do that in the remakes, but here, not really worth it. And then also there is Tangela. Tangela can be found in all times of day, morning, day, night, whatever. Tangela, it's not really that good either, especially since it doesn't evolve into tank growth until Diamond Pearl, Platinum, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, and beyond. But it's... Tangela is... Meh. I mean, it was the only pure grass type in Generation 1. But that doesn't really matter. Ooh, take down. Yeah, I'll, I'll get rid of Fairy Attack for that. And then the last Pokemon we can find here is Weeping Bell, which can be found in morning, day, or night. Weeping Bell... Uh... It's special attack and attack stats are good. You can make a pretty nice mixed attacker with it. But it's decent. I mean, you could use better things, but I do like Victory Bell as a Pokemon. 
I mean, I did use one in XD. But Victory Bell? Weeping Bell? Yeah, the only problem is you're going to need a Leaf Stone to evolve it. But if you want to use a Victory Bell, I say go for it. But there are better grass types, like Venusaur, if you can manage to get your hands on a member of its evolutionary line. But yeah, I recommend Victory Bell and Crystal. But that's pretty much it for all the new Pokemon in this route. Which, wow, not that many actually. I mean, that's what, four new Pokemon? And they're all pretty decent. But yeah, this route, it's pretty short. So, nothing, I mean, this is the last route that has the awesome Lake of Rage music. But other than that, this route is just a little transitionary place between Mahogany and Blackthorn. I mean, there is also a dungeon in the way, but yeah. And the reason Arcana is in the lead, I mean, I'm gonna be keeping Arcana in the lead for a bit so we can learn Psybeam because Psybeam, Arcana needs a stab move. And for those that don't know, stab is the same type of attack bonus. Where if you use a move that's the same type as the Pokemon that's using it, it gets a 1.5 times multiplier, which is awesome. I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but whatever. Oh, look, Seeking. I like Seeking a lot. Mainly because of the whole meme that spawned from Seeking years ago, but Seeking is actually pretty cool. I think... Com voice crack. I think competitively, Seeking is better than Samurott. But that's... Again, that's not saying much. I remember reading a war story on... I think it was Smogon? about how a Seeking wiped out six Pokemon. I mean, Seeking was the guy's last Pokemon, but still, it was pretty cool. I might link to that if I can find it. But yeah, ooh, Rhyhorn. Okay. Ooh, Arcana is a bit low on health. Not that that's a bad thing. And you can quick attack kill it. Yes, you can. But you know what? I'm I'm relieved that I caught anti Rykon Suicune because I don't know. I had trouble catching all three of them as a kid. I mean, they were roaming and whatnot. I mean, that that is just a pain, especially since roaming Pokemon are pretty difficult to track down in the older games. But yeah, here's this little patch of grass that I was talking about. And I'm gonna show off this little lick of tongue, but yeah. Roaming Pokemon, they've become easier to find in the later generations. Except not in X and Y, cause yeah, you have to use the Pokedex thing. Yeah, like in Diamond Pearl Platinum, you had the little Poketch app that can track down Pokemon that are roaming, and I believe in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, you just need to check the Pokegear map to find roaming Pokemon. And Max Revive, that's a very handy item, which I will not be using because it's just too good to use. But yeah, roaming Pokemon were a pain, and I had trouble catching Suicune, Raikou, and Entei as a kid. You know, actually, I didn't get to playing Crystal until. Yeah, I don't think I got to playing it fully until, I'd like to say, 2008? Probably. It was before Platinum came out, but after Diamond and Pearl came out is when I started playing the Game Boy games again. Along with the Gaming Group 5.1, Antroxia, and yes, Donkey157, because he was still a person back then. Yeah. Because I never had Crystal until that time. I don't know how I got it, but I think I still have my cartridge. I think. I still have my gold cartridge, but not my original one. My original gold cartridge was stolen, and then I got silver after that, which I spent a lot of time on. But I got gold from a friend of mine. And the internal battery is dried out, but last time I played through gold, I played all the way up to Ecruteak City and I actually caught Raikou in one ball with a great ball. Too bad I couldn't save. That's a thing. 
in the Game Boy cartridges of Gold, Silver, and Crystal because that has because it has a day and night feature. It drains the internal battery like you wouldn't believe, and it eventually just makes it so you're unable to save and it wipes out your save data. I mean, there are ways to fix it, but I just haven't gotten around to doing that. So, yeah. And Charmeleon, War Turtle, Mewtwo, Tentacruel, Aerodactyl, Armonite, Slowpoke. Okay, is it Slowpoke or Slowbro? I think it's. Oh, I don't remember the Poker app now. I'm gonna need to look that up when this video is done. Ooh, Ember. Oh, yeah, speaking of Charmeleon, even though I was not speaking of it, this week is actually Charizard week according to the official Pokemon. Twitter and Facebook pages. That's that's weird, but whatever. I like Charizard. I mean, not to. I don't like Charizard as much as the Charizard fanboys, but I do like Charizard. And I think yeah, we're actually almost done with this route, which is awesome. And legendary bird Pokemon. There's Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. I think that's what this guy talks about as well. But there are other legendary birds, like the two mascots of gold and silver. I mean, we know one of them, Ho-Oh, we... The other one has not been mentioned in this game so far. And I'm not gonna spoil it, even though this game is like... Over ten years old by now. What's another... What's another Pokemon out there? That, what's a legendary thing that's also a bird? There's Eveltal in X and Y. Um, mm, Skyform Shaman doesn't really count. Tornadoes, Thunders, and Landers don't really count because they're not birds. They're more weird things. Um, I think that's it. Do Latios and Latios count? I don't know. They're more like dragons. But they could... Mm, they could be bird things, I don't know. It's whatever. But yeah, that's pretty much the last trainer of this route. And with that done, okay, yeah, we're gonna have to some Moltres, blah, blah, blah. And no, I don't want your number, but that's pretty much it for this episode. Next episode, we're gonna go inside this little cave thing. And that's gonna be it, it's the ice path, so. I'll end it off right here, and I will be seeing you guys next time. What's over here? There's... Okay, later.